You look beautiful. I'm so proud of you. And my darling, I wish you with all my heart much happiness. Thank you. He's a good man. He really is. We all think we know best, don't we, us mothers? But what we should do is just shut up and let our children lead their own lives. Remember these bad boys? Sausage rolls? What? That must be a little bit weird for you, filming it back here. It's not really known for sushi, the robbers. Grow up, David. <laughs> He's incapable, trust me. I bet you got a speech prepared, haven't you? Have you? No. That's a good job I have then, isn't it? At least Mum will know one of her sons put some thought into our big day. No, he acts like he's God's gift. Perfect son, he's not even been here in years. Because he has a life of his own, something that you'll never have. I see Jason has not made an appearance. What's up? He's stuck in front of that mirror, trying to do his tie-up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Look, we're all right, aren't we? I mean, I know you're not going to be happy about me leaving the garage and that, but I still want us to be friends. You know, you've done so much for me, and I'm not just on about teaching me the trade, but as a mate, too. Never going to have a mate as good as you, am I? Of course, we're all right. You did the right thing taking that job. You'd be a fool not to. You're not just saying that, are you? No, I mean it. Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, it's great, that. Hey. Hey. <laughs> My mum says she was wrong about you. Think you've got a new member of your family? How much champagne has she had? <laughs> Come and see. Come and see. I'm just going up, though. Hello, Joe. What are you doing here? Thought I'd drop by and wish the happy couple all the best. First drink on the house, is it? Good of you to come. Well, I thought better, I'd no point moaning about a bar opening at the end of the street and then doing nothing about it. Uh, pity other people don't take the same view. I'm afraid it's not going to be the turnout I was hoping for. All right, you take care. Bye bye. Oh, Sally, what are you doing here? I just wanted a word. Right, what about? Well, it's about time off. Ah, I see. No. Look, we've got a really big order. I need all hands to sew machines. Besides, you've been having plenty of time off recently. A lot of dental work, methinks. No, I mean, yeah, that's what I've said, but... I've been lying. Interesting. I've not been going to the dentist. Well, Sally, I'm quite certain you've not been in your backyard sunning yourself, so... Cancer. Breast cancer. And nobody knows except Kevin. And I've had to go to the hospital and... I've had tests and chats with the doctors. I didn't want anybody else to know. So I made up about the dentist. But my teeth are fine. In fact, my teeth are perfect. <sighs> Orange juice in the fridge. I, I thought you could use the vouchers for any household things you needed. <laughs> Oh, that's so kind. Uh, we, we, it's from Betty as well, and Rita. <laughs> oh, let me see you ring. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Do you sit there? Get you some champagne. Oh, thank you. Ah, Gail, now, this is the last of the five bottles. Do you want me to open some more? Um, well, one more to be going on with. Right. Hi. Hi. 
I expect to see Jason glued to your side. He's at work. What, he couldn't get away for his girlfriend's dad's wedding? What? Stop it. Why should I? You... You know why. I don't want to talk about Jason with you. I'm sorry, I'm just teasing you. I don't mean anything by it, but he's missing out. You look very beautiful today. I'm going outside to get some fresh air. I paid the debt. I gave you the last I owed you, £4,000. After telling me you had no money. I borrowed it. Borrowing to pay back what you owe? to kickstart the economy. We agreed we're through, so leave me alone. Unfortunately, there's still the matter of interest to pay off. Now, I reckon £500 a week for the next ten weeks or so to us. £5,000? I'm not paying you five grand in interest. Did you know? And it's interesting, this. The courts operate a compensation level. Like a broken limb is worth five grand. You're threatening to break my legs? I didn't say that. You keep your eyes off of my daughter. She's such a pretty girl. Right. I think me and you need to get something sorted out. What's that then? You! Making digs about me and Jason. There's nothing wrong with me and Jason. Good. I'm pleased to hear it. Then why do you keep saying things? Ah, uh, because I just get bored. And you're so easy to wind up. I promise I won't do it again. <laughs> I'm not easy to wind up. Oh, you so are. Look, we didn't know who the other was when we met, right? We had a fun flirtation, a kiss, but you're making it out to be the worst thing in the world that's ever happened to you. Uh, I have a boyfriend. I can't go around kissing blokes. OK, no. Shrug it off, accept it and move on. Your dad has married my mum. We're going to be bumping into each other for years. I can deal with it. As you keep bringing it up, about Jason and stuff, it, it unnerves me, OK? I feel like you're waiting to catch me out. OK. OK, look. I swear that from now on, I'll leave you alone. You're just the daughter of the bloke who's married my mum. Nothing else. You're a great girl. Jason's lucky to have you. But to be honest, you're not my type. <laughs> oh, yeah. And what makes you think you're my type? Oh, well, no doubt I'm your type. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here, then? <clears throat> How's Kevin taking it? Well, his mum died of cancer when he was 15. Same age as Sophie. It's not something he talks about much, but... I know he thinks about it. About her. The success rate's now really good. That was a stupid thing to say, sorry. I have to have a lumpectomy next week. I might have to have chemo. I couldn't face coming in here. Take all the time you want. Your job's safe. You'll be paid regardless. Thank you. So did you just find a lump one day? Yeah. Yeah. And I panic like hell, cos you do, don't you? No, oh, I know, I did. A while back. What happened? Well, got it checked out. How lucky. You'll be lucky too. I can't cry at home. I don't want the girls to hear me. And I won't cry with Kevin, because... I don't want to upset him. You 
enough to own now. <laughs> You're making something out of nothing. Yeah. Then why did Tina go hurrying back inside with a face full of guilt? She was upset. You don't know what you saw. Yeah, I do. I saw you and you were all over her, laughing and joking. I was cheering her up. She was down because Jason hadn't turned up, that's all. What do you think? We're going to have a bunk about here. Sorry, mate. It's not my style. Just stay away from Tina. All right, yeah. Because you and her had a little thing, didn't you? A little thing? We were together for over a year. We'd have had a baby together if Gail hadn't dragged her off to get an abortion. Yeah, you didn't know that, did you? No, this is just typical of you. Coming round here in your fancy car, flashing your money around, you think you can have a crack at any girl you want? Gail thinking you're God's gift? Don't call her Gail. She's your mum. Show her some respect. Get off back to Nottingham, Nicky. You know nothing about our lives, nothing about Gail, or the loser that she's married, and you know nothing about me and Tina. You call me Nicky one more time, and I'll shove your teeth down your throat! I know plenty of what's been going on. All the pain you've caused this family. I'm wanting it. You just watch this step, eh? Why don't you watch the jacket? Well, then why are you so threatened by me? Because you are. Go on, admit it. Threatened by you? Have you heard yourself? How you pathetic. Well, what are you going to do? Hit me with your styling gel. You know what? I never thought much to your dad. But he's a thousand times the man you'll ever be. Yeah? Well, let's hope you don't follow in your dad's footsteps, eh? and end up knife to death in some back alley. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna eat you. Not this time. But I'm warning you. Just drop it, eh? Coronation Street is a close-knit community. We have young families and a, a number of senior citizens who, whose lives are bound to be deeply affected by the opening of this bar. It's also going to make parking very difficult for the residents. And deliveries are also going to be very problematic considering the narrow access from Viaduct Street. It's my understanding that parking has been allocated already. That's right. <laughs> Whether parking is allocated or not, people are bound to want to park on Coronation Street because it's the nearest street to the bar, and this will disrupt the residents. Also, there's the noise pollution. <laughs> now, I've already handed you the petition, and uh, many of the people who signed that have got young families. But regardless of their ages, the names that are on that petition represent a vast number of the community. And our message to the planning office is clear. We do not want this bar. Not on our street. Thank you. Nice one. Thank you. I'd like to hear from the applicant now, another Mr. Barlow. Yes, uh, that'll be me. And, and yes, the, uh, the other Mr. Barlow is my father. And yes, his opposition comes from the fact that I am his son and he disapproves of this venture because, um, and I want to get this out in the open. I am a recovering alcoholic. Well, it's not the first time that I've, uh, I've stood up and said those words. However, I want to put that aside and talk instead about the merits of the venture and the benefits I believe this bar will bring to the community. Everything all right? Yeah. Only you look a bit on edge. Oh, you know how it is, <laughs> wedding nerves. I thought you had those before the wedding. <laughs> I'm fine. I, uh... Look, you know that money you lent me? The flat deposit? Yeah. Well, I was glad I could help. I only wish I could lend you some more, but my pension's very restrictive. Yeah. Yeah, of course. 
When are you going to tell Gail about the flat? Oh, uh, I'm telling her when we're away on the honeymoon. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a wonderful surprise for her. <laughs> I reckon. Let's just hope common sense prevails. Oh, they're taking their time. They'll say yes. Yeah, yeah, they will. Peter's speech had a meeting out of his hand. <laughs> She's getting up. I'd like to thank you all for coming this evening. After listening to both sides, my colleagues and I have reached a decision. Mr Barlow. Sorry, Mr Peter Barlow. Your application to open a bar on Viaduct Street has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Is that a yes? That is a yes. Yes! <laughs> OK! <laughs> what about the petition? I'm sorry, Mr Barlow. Application has been approved. And you're content with that, are you? For a community to be railroaded, yet more teenage drinkers marauding through residential areas in the small hours? Oh. But then, of course, you wouldn't care about that, would you? Care about the, the feelings of the ordinary people who elected you into office. It's not when you've got fat cat businessmen oiling palms. I'd be very careful about what you're saying, Mr Barlow. Hey, Dad. No hard feelings, eh? Hey, yes. Oh, at last! Yeah, sorry. I took longer than I thought. Got some shower, get dressed. It's okay. Yeah. Mm. What was that for? Mm, I'm just pleased to see. Uh, Liz, can I get a pint and where Bettina's having? Oh, coming out. Nick, David, can I get you guys a drink? Got one, thanks. All right, David? Yeah, I'll have a drink with you, Jason. Oh, that's very decent, you, Jason. Mine's a pint. <laughs> can we have some hush, please? The bride would like to say a few words. Oh, yay! Hey. Hey. Uh, I, uh, I, well, I, I won't interrupt the drinking for long, I promise. <laughs> I just, um, I just wanted to thank you all for being here. Seeing, um, my friends and family together, I feel very blessed. But I especially wanted to thank Joel for being here. It's no secret that we've had a, a rough time of it lately. But it's a credit to Joe that we've come through that. And we're here today, standing together. Hey, hey. I feel... I feel I've been given another chance at happiness. And there's not many that get that. I've found myself a good man who I feel safe with. Aww. And I love him. <laughs> so, as unconventional as it is, I would like you to raise your glasses and toast my husband. Number four. <laughs> and toast my Lovely husband, Joe. To Joe. To Joe. Joe. And to my wife, Gail. <laughs> to Gail. What happened? What do you think happened? I'm sorry. Are you? I don't believe you. It's very rare for a venture not to get permission to open, especially in in today's climate. Oh, don't give me the council line, Deirdre. I've had quite enough of that. You know, they all but laughed at me at that meeting. And you used to work with those people, Deirdre. You turning up and voicing your opposition would have helped no end. No, it wouldn't. What would help is you believing in your son. But this isn't about Peter, is it? It's about your nose being put out of joint by George because he wants to send Simon to a private school. Oh, that man has got his own agenda. Well, if he has, you're playing right into his hands. Oh, Ken, you've lost. Just accept that you've lost. 
that bar is going to go ahead whether you like it or not. But it's not too late to show some support. If you're worried about George, then you get behind B to yourself. B is father. Hey, congratulations, Joe. Thanks. Keep your eye on the scene for me whilst we're gone. Yeah, of course we're all back. No, I mean, hey, Jason. Look after that. You okay? Hi, David. Hi. Don't burn the house down while I'm away. Looking forward to getting away. Shame we have to come back. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Wouldn't you like to go away and never come back? Leave it all behind you? Mm. Not as I do. If you've been affected by Sally's story, you can find more information at itv.com slash cori or call Breast Cancer Care on 0808 800 6000. Calls from landlines are free, but some mobile providers may charge. <laughs>